we'll talk about uh, displaced calcaneal fractures, one of the uh, difficult fractures to treat <coughs> and quite often neglected, conserved. And uh, so, main mechanism of injury is the axial loading. If the axial loading is in going posteriorly directed force, it is like the joint depressed type. Okay. And if it is uh, axial directed force, then it is uh, tongue type. So, based on classification, one the most common classification uses, we use is Sanders classification, it is based on coronal CT images. Uh, depends on the number of fractures and the fracture line position. So, this position is quite important. So, type 2, type 3, type 1 is undisplaced, uh, need not treat surgically. Type 2 has type 2 A, B, C. Uh, the fracture line depends, uh, goes from lateral to medial. So, type A is the most lateral fracture line, B is middle facet and C is the medial facet of the, medial part of the posterior facet. And uh, type 3 has two fracture lines. Type 4 is multiple fractures, uh, which we'll discuss later because it's usually can difficult to treat with sinus tarsal. So, as we see type 2 sanders, there is a fracture line, this is type 2A, type 2B <coughs> and type C we see multiple uh, depressed fragment and two fracture line. So, this is AB type, BC and AC. <coughs> so, what would we do in such cases? Either operate or conserve. Most of these fractures are conserved, we have seen so many malunited fractures and it is very difficult to treat than treating in the acute scenario. So, how do we treat it? So, where is the dilemma? So, both surgery is challenging, where, where comes the challenges in reduction, in soft tissue handling, in treating wound complications, reconstructing the angles <coughs> and fear of wound complication is the most worrisome fear why most of these fractures are not treated surgically. How do we do it? Maybe we can just go ahead with SX philopristy and treat it in a cast in a closed reduction or should we just put a cast and do subtaracrylidesis later which is better. Let's see. <clears throat> so, why to conserve this fractures when you can easily get this with a minimally invasive sinus tarsi approach. So, what are why we are shifting from lateral extensile to sinus tarsi? Why? Because the reduction, the soft tissue exposure is good, there is less wound complications, it can be used in displaced fractures, uh, even significant hind foot virus valgus deformity can be treated, there is broadening can be treated. So, why this if you can get away with this? When not to operate sinus tarsi? Like I said, neurovascular insufficiency, poorly controlled diabetes, non-compliance of patients, systemic disorders, and maybe type 4 sanders. <clears throat> so, why is this better? Again, small incision, less soft tissue dissection, less wound complication, direct visualization of the articular surface. In the lateral extensile, we have to elevate a lot to achieve the articular surface reduction. In sinus tarsi, you can directly see the reduction. However, it is difficult to maneuver the fracture fragments in sinus tarsi, but it is possible. We need not wait for 10, 14 days for the wrinkling sign to come. We can just go in immediately. And there is no difference in the radiological outcomes as well. So, incision starts from the tip of fibula to fourth metatarsal or the calcaneocuboid joint. If we have to involve the anterior process of calcaneum, we can go more plantarly towards the fifth metatarsal base. <clears throat> when we dissect, we directly encounter the peroneal tendons, we retract the peroneal tendons and we can easily go into the joint, there is no dissection required. We can elevate the periosteum deep to the peroneals and achieve reduction of the fractures using osteotomes and for good exposure, we can use additional instruments like lamina spreader or Hinterman retractor. Or maybe we can just cut off with the CFL ligament and repair it back for good exposure of the posterior facet. A stenman pin in the proximal fragment is a must to maneuver the 
heel alignment. So once we fix the intraarticular piece, we can then fix it the remaining with additional plate if there is a lateral wall uh, burst fracture. And just slide in a plate uh, after subperiosteal dissection. So here are a few cases which are treated with uh, sinus tarsi approach. You can see uh, there is the fractures doesn't seem to be that clear on the X-ray, but when we do the CT scan, we can see there is subluxation of the talus. So it was maneuvered using sinus tarsi. We elevated the fracture with osteotome and fixed it with the K wire and see the reduction. So this. After reducing this medial column screw is quite important. It holds the fracture fragment. It acts as a good buttress and you can add a few screws. So why did, uh, intraarticular fractures are more difficult? Because there are a high rate of complications. It is important to restore the anatomy as well as width, length and height, everything. One more case where we see this, this is a joint depression type. Uh, we reconstructed it using K wires and after removing the K wires, you can see the results. So this is a case, similar tongue type fracture where you can see the depression, the incision is so small, you can directly visualize the articular surface and the fragment. We elevated it using a K wire and an osteotome. So this is how we dissect and raise the fracture fragment. And this is how we fix it with temporary K wires and adding further K wires to stabilize. We can replace the wires with the CC screws. So you can see all the good alignment of the uh, articular surface, bowler's angles, recent angles, also the heel alignment on the axial X rays. So this was on the opposite side. This was much easier than the other side and we fix it with screws. We can use screws, we can use K wires, we can use plates. There are now newer types of plates, sinus tarsi plate, which we can use with this approach and uh, no need to go for lateral extensile. So again, important is to look for the heel alignment in axial x-rays and the medial column screw, which goes from in the calcaneum. So, this is difficult to appreciate in lateral extensile approach. Here you can easily see the reduction. You can easily see the articular surface. You can add a plate. This was a very old X-ray. Mm, important is to see, which I missed out in the earlier slides, is to see the broadened view in prop uh, when you come out of it. So this is the skin marking for the incision. Uh, the number two white line is the superficial peroneal nerve. The number one white line is the sural nerve. The, the incision for lateral extensile is A and B is for the sinus tarsi. So in lateral extensile, there is injury of uh, there is chance of injury to sural nerve, and in sinus tarsi, there is no such injury to any of the important structures. How many cases are there? More than so. Hmm? So literature. Yeah, sir, done. So literature also supports lateral extensile and now is lesser uh, popular than uh, sinus tarsi. Uh, we have number of papers which suggest that sinus tarsi is also a better option where we can, there is no radiological difference. There is definitely less wound complication, less in injury to the nerve. And uh, so take home message is, uh, Medial uh, sinus tarsi is better than lateral extensile. Medial column screw is an important stabilizer. Implant can be variable from K wires to per percutaneous screws to buttress plate. Buttress plate can be done in lateral burst fractures and can be used very well in type 2 and type 3. Type 4 is still a questionable area. Thank you. Thank you.